Since 2013, I've been working at Shell as a project engineer, which means that I coordinate big, uh, coordinate the construction of really big factories that Shell builds all across the world. And this right here is a picture of one of the, one of the ones that we're looking to build up in Pittsburgh right now. So as I said before, you can really achieve great things through STEM. One of, one of the coolest achievements, I would say the coolest STEM achievement ever, was when the United States sent, uh, sent people to the United and that came about when, in 1960, a guy by the name of John F. Kennedy, who was president of the United States, he said, you know, we ought to send a man to the moon by the end of the decade in 10 years. And that was crazy at the time. Nobody knew how to do it, and the United States barely had a space program at that time. But wouldn't you know it, less than 10 years later, before 
President Kennedy's deadline ran out, we had two men on the moon. And that's a remarkable achievement. And that came about through STEM. So the, the first three men who uh, went to the moon, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin, were all STEM graduates. STEM is also in more common everyday things that you know, a lot of us take for granted, including myself. For example, the lights in this room, they turn on when you flip the light switch, right? It's as simple as that. Well, it's a lot more, it's a lot more complex. There are a lot of very, very complicated STEM systems that need to work perfectly in order for that light to turn on when you flip the switch. So when the light comes on, a number of things have to happen. Electricity has to flow through that light bulb. That electricity flows from a transformer located somewhere on this building or somewhere down the street. That transformer receives electricity from high voltage transmission lines crisscross the country and traverse hundreds of lines. Those lines terminate at a power plant. In the power plant, a gas turbine generator generates electricity from some kind of fuel, like coal, oil, or gas. That fuel typically will come from something like a pipeline, especially if it's oil or gas. And that oil or gas will originate at somewhere like an offshore oil and gas platform. So all these systems need to work, and they need to work together perfectly in order for that light switch to turn on. So if anything breaks along that chain, your lights won't work. But your lights always do work, right? Almost always. So, so those systems are working, and they're working because STEM people are supporting and maintaining the systems. Things you can do in STEM is like build a car out of Legos that runs on compressed air. And no one's done that before, but this 18-year-old kid in Europe decided, yeah, I'm going to build a car out of, out of Lego pieces and make it run on compressed air. Really, really nice. Awesome. Yeah, so one thing, one thing that I've done is that uh, in my, during my undergraduate uh, degree, I took a class in robot design. And what was really awesome about this class is you spent the whole class not sitting down in a lecture hall, but you're designing, building, and testing your own robot. And everyone in the class got to make your own robot. And the most fun part about it is that at the end of the course, everyone took their robot and competed against each other. So these robots did things like pick up balls, or crush aluminum cans, or you know, put books on the shelf, things like that. So my robot, my robot wasn't that good, but I'm going to show you a robot of a friend of mine. <laughs> my robot just put books on a shelf. It wasn't that exciting. My friend, my friend built the only robot that could crush an aluminum can. And let me tell you how hard that is. To crush an aluminum can, you need 200 pounds of force. So you essentially need a guy my size to stand on top of it to crush it. So to do that with the robot, yeah, it's not that easy. But to do it with the robot, to do it with the robot takes a lot more, it's a lot more complicated. And so let me show you a video of my friend Blake who figured out how to do it. Hi, uh, my name is Blake Sessions and I'm here to show you my Tutable 7 robot. So basically it's a can crusher, you can see some detail. On the bottom, we have a homemade pneumatic cylinder here, um, a big linear bearing to keep this section in line, and then here's the section where the uh, can is crushed. On top here, we have uh, an over-center mechanism that gets out of the way uh, for the can to be crushed. So here it is in action. We roll over the can, just like that. Can gets crushed against the block, finish off, and then at the end, the can needs to get put into a slot. So once it finishes depressurizing, which is right about now, and there it goes. So that's about it. Um, yeah, I've had fun doing this. It's what I enjoy doing, so thanks. There are many, many different opportunities for people at Shell with all kinds of different educational backgrounds, from, from high school degrees all the way to PhD. So right now I'm going to show you a video of somebody who is applying their, their STEM uh, skills from, from their, their bachelor's degree uh, working at Shell right now as a, as a drilling engineer in West Texas. So this is someone who you might see walking along the street here in Houston.
Of course, I had my mentor there with me, and that really helped me feel comfortable in my work environment. I don't know many other professions or many other companies that would give somebody so early in their career so much responsibility. It helps you grow very quickly. Your learning curve just escalates like you would not imagine. Hey guys, um, got a couple of questions for you at the closing of uh, our presenters. One of them are, what is our presenter's name? Do you happen to remember in the, in the beginning of this presentation? Can anybody tell me? Okay. Close enough. <laughs> and the last question I got for you, what, uh, what does Dan do for Shell? Sounds to me that you guys were engaged, listening to Dan. Um, I believe that uh, we are excited and honored about having you here, Dan, uh, participating with our students. Uh, I'm sure they've learned a lot in a short period of time with the presentation, and it also gives them a better oversight on what career choices they may have down the line. As he indicated, at this stage, we all have different interests. Eventually, as far as time goes, we will define our interests and consider working harder at it. But at least this gives you the exposure for choices that you have within your life.